In my quest to be the best doggone camp counselor I can, I've tried many things. I've climbed the highest mountain. Oops. <laughs> Wrong floor. I've also paddled the roughest seas. Dirt lake. <laughs> I've built the biggest campfire and toasted the biggest marshmallow. And I've spent long, lonely nights searching for new and exciting outdoor experiences for my campers. Hey, don't knock it. Camp Comics Magazine has given me a lot of good ideas. Of course, it also gave me my worst idea ever. Motivate your campers to reach new heights of achievement with Colonel Bilgewater's blue badges. Ah, oh, just what the head counselor ordered. Dear Colonel Bilgewater, please rush me a set of your badges for Camp Candy. They sound like a great idea. Yours truly, John Candy. <laughs> Colonel Bilgewater sent the badges by return mail. Listen up, campers. I've got an important announcement. Announcements, announcements, announcements. A terrible waste of time. A terrible waste of time. A terrible, 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 terrible waste of time. Announcements, announcements, announcements. <laughs> okay, you got me. You got me. But this really is an important announcement. Uh, what I just said. Starting today, you'll all be able to earn an assortment of badges. Oh. 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 Wow, this could start a whole new fad. Badges. I could get a million I guess we could all see the possibilities. Badges. Beautiful blue badges. <laughs> Each of the kids got a copy of Colonel Bilgewater's handbook to study all the badges and the requirements. And pretty soon there was an amazing change around Camp Candy. Robin and Iggy were working on the Camp Beautification Badge. Vanessa chose to work on the horse grooming badge. Next, I'm going to do his nails. <coughs> Alex's choice was the first aid badge. <coughs> and Theodore and Binky worked on their fun with tools badge. Yep, everybody was having a ball. It wasn't long before the kids were earning badges, and the more badges they got, the more badges they wanted. Congratulations, Theodore. Here's your Fun with Tools badge. Ah, oh, no, no. looks like you really earned this one. Eee, ooh. Those are the most beautiful blue badges I've ever seen. Uh, yup, yup. Uh, of course, they're the only ones I've ever seen. Oh, look at how incredibly fab they are. Colonel Bilgewater's blue badges had given new life to Camp Candy. Good morning, campers. Time for some announcements. <laughs> I said, uh, I said announcements. Campers, an announcements. Uh, Rick, uh, I have, uh, some announcements to make. <laughs> announcements, Rick. Uh, not now, John. I'm busy. I want to get more badges today, all right? Oh, well, sure, sure. Nice. <laughs> I understand. Sure. Nice nice to see you, uh, kids reading. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yes! There is a good grooming badge, and I'm going to get it. Grooming is good, so I, uh, I guess I won't make any, uh, <laughs> announcements. This badge business was bigger than I imagined. Dear Colonel Bilgewater, um... I just want you to know what a remarkable change your badges have made here at Camp Candy. Your blue handbook right here before me 
I, I, I thought it was right here before me. Help! Stop! Theodore, I'm coming! <laughs> Rick! Oh, thank goodness! Get him away! But Theodore, he saved you. No, he didn't. He just kept me from getting my swimming bag. Well, gee, how am I supposed to earn my water rescue badge if I don't rescue someone? From now on, rescue him. Okay, I, I, I hear you. Listen to this. The good grooming badge. Try a new hairstyle by applying mousse to your hair. <laughs> you hoo it sounds pretty. I've been trying to get this mousse out of my hair for years. <laughs> Too off. No doubt about it. Those blue badges were making my campers red with rage. Rick was working on his landscape painting badge. Bullseye, yeah! Alex was working on her archery badge. The funny thing is, all those badges weren't making the campers any happier. <laughs> Pinky has more than I have. Well, I'd have more if it wasn't for her. Uh, you should see what she did to me. Figure. Dear Colonel Bilgewater, I'd like to suggest that you make a really stupid and dumb idea badge. And I think the first one should go to you. You earned it. Yours truly, John Candy. All right, good morning, campers. Time for some announcements. I said announcements. All right, I'm making this announcement whether you like it or not. It's time to turn in your handbooks and your badges. What? Are you serious? Yes, I am. Yay! Yay! If only Colonel Bilgewater could see this. We were very busy the rest of the day. All right, keep the line moving right this way. Badges come next. Come on, here we go. By evening, we realized that we don't need badges to enjoy camping or to have fun. We just need each other. Nice fire, Alex. Hey, thanks for helping me build it. Hey, Theodore, tomorrow I'll teach you how to dive. Cool. Yep, Camp Candy was peaceful again. At last. <laughs> The full moon was shining down on Camp Candy like a spotlight from the sky. What a night it had been so far. Rick had been snatched from his rowboat by an octopus. Robin had been slurped up by a huge plant. And Iggy was hiding from a giant spider. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, tonight was Tall Tales Night. We all sit around the campfire and make up any story we can. So the giant spider forgot that the sun was rising and it shriveled up at daybreak. But I safely returned to camp. 
end. Oh, a neat story, Iggy. Yeah, that was pretty good, Iggy. Yep, that was good, Iggy. Oh, that was a great story, Iggy. A real tall tale. Who's next? Uh, you are, John. Me? Oh, gee, I don't have any tall tales to spin. <laughs> but I do have a rather strange story I could tell you. <laughs> Come on, John. This is a tall tale, isn't it? No, this really happened. It was back a while ago. One day, I was getting the camp ready for the upcoming season. If I remember correctly, it was the day I was marking the Cacciatore Trail. Mark my thumb, too. <laughs> I had finished my work and was about to return to camp when something odd caught my eye. What was it? A giant insect? No, Iggy. This isn't a tall tale like your giant spider story. This really happened. Go on, John. What'd you see? I had stumbled across the biggest ice cube I had ever seen. Upon closer investigation, it seemed there was something frozen in the middle of the ice. But I couldn't tell if it was a giant fossil of a woolly mammoth or two woolly mammoths. But I was flabbergasted when I saw three people frozen inside. You mean like, like frozen cavemen? I didn't know who they were or how long they'd been in that big giant ice cube. So I built a fire to melt the ice. The heat from the fire worked quickly to melt the ice. Wow! Well, well, I'll be. I couldn't believe my eyes when there in front of me were three little men. Please get off me, you flabby, fat-footed, fat-toed flop! Stop belly aching like it's my fault, Gabby. Luther's on top of me. A fool, hell! You lardy, dirty, tweet with it, love to get off. The man who screams the loudest doesn't always get hurt. What's that supposed to mean? You double-doodle frick frat. Get off! You're squashing me! Ah. Get off before I become a carn son. Squish stain on the ground! Oh, oh, ooh, oh, ooh. The men acted as if they'd known each other for quite some time. Uh, can I uh, help? Uh, are, are you fellas all right, or what? <laughs> sure, we're fine. Just a little snow fell on us, was all. A little snow? It must have been an avalanche. You three probably were frozen in there for years. You're frozen? Yeah, my, my. Frozen? Rip, you cotton brain, tumbleweed, chasing avalanche, causing biddly boo. You got us froze in a pile of snow. You was the one said they had the loudest echo. And I still say I do. Here goes. No, don't! Avalanche, remember? Shh, shh, shh. The three men told me the whole story. Well, three different versions of the whole story. They'd been sitting around jawing about the same things they usually jawed about. <sighs> this rock is real comfortable. I'm so cozy rested on this rock that I don't guess I'll be moving anymore today. Oh, he must be lying on bedrock. That's when Gabby started all the trouble. Betcha I can make a bigger, better echo than it's ever been done. I can do you better any day. He who shouts loudest doesn't always have the best echo. Now, what in Dogwood's that supposed to mean? It means put up or clam up. They argued all the way up Mount Frostback to have their echo contest. Follow me. I know the trail better than you. I'm supposed to be first. Hey, this isn't fair. I want to be the leader. Uh, no, I'm going to... Come on, I have to get an idea. Rip was ringing his cowbell and working up a terrific echo. However, it must have loosened the snow. Well, that's quite a story. Don't blame me. I never had a chance to get a good clanking going. It was Gabby's blabbing that caused the avalanche. I wasn't blabbing. Weren't we trying?
mind for the greatest echo? Either way, you, you caused the avalanche. Well, if I caused the avalanche, then I won the contest. I won the contest! I won the contest! Evidently, Gabby gave it quite a try. Listen up, you whimpering, puny, baby bottle drinking, feeble echo! Can you hear me? It seemed that the echo didn't care for Gabby's attitude. Who are you calling a wimp, Bob? You're not supposed to answer me! You're supposed to echo me! You crumbled up, damaged, mollycoddled waste of time, broke down all echo! Now, Rip, he told it a different way. He blamed the other two. Listen, fellows, one blast from this Edelweissenheimer horn, and I'll start an echo that'll last all day. Well, that should last until sundown, at least. Well, I did well get comfortable. There should be a long day. Then Luther claimed that Gabby and Rip tried to out-echo his echo. Echo! Echo! I never met anybody like those three. Whoever caused that avalanche wasn't playing it safe. You're right, Iggy. You've got to be careful around that much snow. Uh, come on, John. Did this really happen, or are you telling us a tall tale? Okay, if you don't believe me, I won't tell you the rest of the story. I like a guy named Gabby. He sounds like my grandpa. Gabby had a lot of leadership qualities. Did you become friends with him? Oh, yeah, we became friends. I knew the fellas were probably hungry, so we headed back to the mess hall for some chow. You can imagine how hungry you'd be if you were stuck in an ice cube for as long as these three had been. Betcha I can eat a hundred flapjacks. One hundred and a half. Yeah, but can you do it in under a minute? I'm hungry enough, I'll tell you that. Bet you can't do it. That's all old Rip needed. He stacked up a five-foot-high pile of pancakes and poured on a bucket of syrup. And old Rip ate over a hundred and fifty pancakes. That couldn't really happen. Look, I know it sounds unbelievable, Iggy, but, but I was there to see it. Did he blow up? No. But he did expand a bit. That was a heap of flapjacks that Rip ate. Must have been hungrier than I thought. Didn't think I could do it, did you? Hurry up, Rip. You're moving slower than a snail walking against the wind. But you can't catch me. <laughs> this is the only way to travel. What? How can somebody so full of pancakes float? Well, it was a very light batter. <laughs> oh, what a groaner. <laughs> Come on, John. This is really a tall tale. <laughs> no. It's just a coincidence that I'm telling this story on Tall Tales Day, that's all. It's, it's, I'm tell, I'm, believe me, it, it all really happened. I'm in front. I know the trail better than you. Follow me. It's my turn to be first. You were first yesterday. Trying to leave me behind, are you? Let's Come on, get, don't push me. The last time I saw them, they were running off to see if the sunset was really hiding behind the mountains. What do you think really happened to those guys? A flying saucer took them away, and now they're living on another planet. John! Okay, okay, okay. They built a time machine and went back to their own era. John, what really happened? Okay, okay. The real story? All right. The real story is they had another echo contest and got themselves frozen again. John! Tell us, which is a true ending? 
You tell me. Oh, man. What? What's the problem? I mean, come on. It's a true story. You tell me, dear. That's all I'm saying. You tell me.